And Chuck, wouldn't you be happy to be number two in the country or maybe even number seven? Well, I think almost any team in the country would be happy to be two, but not these. Not these. No, they have a tradition that just belies that. They want to be first. Well, I'll tell you, we saw last week, though, that there's a difference between number two and number one when we saw Iowa State lose to Iowa. There is a difference, but, but still, Iowa State had some real outstanding performances out of those young people, the three freshmen and the transfer, and I think that's the, the change that they're looking for, and that's the turn. But number seven for Oklahoma State? Oh, boy, this, this not, they're not used to that. Oh, no, they, they don't even want to be second. In fact, they let the coach go. Uh, they had a coach named Tom Chesbro that was 43 in a row and a three-time national runner-up, and they let him go to hire Coach Joe C. Joe C. came from California. He's the man who made the long jump into the fire. Yes, it's definitely the fire. Now, this guy likes to work with individuals. It takes some time. He likes to show that he has uh, that one-to-one -one relationship with kids, and then they make the improvement, and the team takes a little bit of time. Well, let's see if he gets the time. I wonder if he will. There are going to be some terrific matchups up and down the line tonight. We talk about, you know, being going either way, but it really could if everybody's in there for Oklahoma State. At 167, for instance, they have an outstanding young man named Mark Van Tyne who is hurt. Yes, he may not wrestle. Uh, we would like to see him. He's ranked third in the country. He came from Louisiana State when they dropped that program and wrestled behind Kevin Jackson, who's now in the Iowa State program, may give Iowa State some advice. Now, Mike Van Arsdale is a man who would be getting that advice. We saw him lose against Kistler at Iowa, at Iowa last week. Well, he wrestled a real tough match, though, against him. And in fact, for about five minutes, he was in that baby. And he wrestles well in big matches. And this is a big one for him tonight because it, uh, national seeding and Big 8 tournament results are there. You know, we laugh a lot about the big heavyweights. You know, the two big guys that get out there and push each other around, and one of them falls down on top of the other one? Well, that isn't what's going to happen tonight. These are two tough guys, including the best in the country right now. Yes, I think we're going to see in Tom Erickson, a guy that likes to wrestle that low-level attack. This guy will go in and make the low-level attack on the knees, down around the ankles. He'll hit there, and he's really good at it. His opponent is John Haropoulos, and the whole state of Iowa has been happy with the improvement that this young man has made. He's a, he's a true heavyweight. Yes, he is. He's made the move up from 190. Probably shows the benefit of working out with Coach Bannock as much as anybody. And, of course, his three losses this year have all been to Erickson. So that, that'll be fun to watch him come back and try to get that off his record. Well, you going to look in the crystal ball for us? Oh, I think it's going to be Iowa State tonight by 10, 10, 11 points anyway. Oh, you think so? Okay, well, that looks good. It should be an interesting match tonight. And it's Oklahoma State against Iowa State. By the way, on tonight's 10th anniversary edition of Off the Mat, you'll meet Mike Mann, a cyclone who's had several impressive wins over cowboy foes over the years. But right now, let's relive another 10-year memory from 1981 when a wrestler by the name of Nate Carr faced one of his arch rivals from Oklahoma. Less than a minute in a tie match. Brazil came in on that single, but Carr did a nice wizard job and caught it off, and he's coming around behind. He may score two out of it. Not yet. There, there it is. There I think he's got it now. Nice job of countering off that wizard. He blocked off well and walked around behind for the two. He's and he still, has a cradle. Just while keep it locked in there, he just while keep it locked. 30 seconds to go. He get him killed here, he may get some fall points. He just walks set back and keep it chinched up. Don't be in a hurry and lose something. Doesn't want to overdrive his base any. Just want to keep it locked. Stay right with it. Eight seconds to go. Eight seconds to go in a barn burr. You got eight seconds to go. Don't give him a two-pointer. Jam him tough, but don't give him two. He'll go into a roll probably immediately, and Carr knows it. Oh, boy, that looked like a tough spot to be in. And it's going to end right there. We're back at Hilton Coliseum in Ames at Iowa State University for the duel between the Iowa State Cyclones and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. There is the old guard in the new. You saw Harold <laughs> Nichols, who yes. uh, hung it up last year. And Joe C., who's just taken over. The second year now at uh, the range for the Cowboys. Those are the teams. You see Oklahoma State's had a rough year for them. I'll tell you, when's the last time they lost four duels? They hardly ever lose four, and they're in for a, a fifth loss tonight, I think. Those are the matchups. We see Bays against Summit at 18, Woodburn and Kelly. Good match there. Bailey and Gibbons at 34. Scove and Gibbons at 42. Scove beat Gibbons once a couple of years ago. 
Kuzalina and Krieger at 150. At 158, it's going to be Silva, we think, against Bill Tate. And up at uh, the up, upper weight, 67, 77, 90 in heavyweight. Oklahoma State has some tough ones. Van Tyne or Boone at 67 against Van Arsdale. Wilson against Gassman at 77. Farrell against Steve Metzger filling in for Volker. And that big heavyweight match between number one and number four, Erickson and Heropolis. Should be a tough one tonight. There's Bob Siddons, one of the Green famous names in Iowa wrestling as a coach. Now still as a referee. Yes, his uh, coaching successes are history. Yeah, he got to coach Dan Gable in high school. And we'll have a mic on Bob Sidden, so you'll be able to hear him talking to the uh, wrestlers as they proceed tonight. Last year, Oklahoma State lost only three all year, finished second in the Big Eight and up in the top in the NCAA at number four. But that's not good enough, you know, for Oklahoma State, as we said in the opening. At Iowa State, last year was a year where they finished third in the NCAA and third in the Big Eight. And they're much stronger this year than they were last. There's no question about it. We're ready to go at 118 pounds. These are two youngsters. For Oklahoma State, Corey Bays, a freshman of Putnam City, Oklahoma, in the orange uniform. And for Iowa State, Perry Summit, a sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana, who won this spot in a wrestle-off against Gary McCall. Well, McCall had wrestled a lot early, but uh, Summit's come on strong. Summit in. Wrestling hard. There he's in on a nice high crotch. He wasted no time at all, did he, Chuck? No, he went right to it. And, went right, and you know, Bays from Oklahoma State is a small man. In fact, they redshirted him last year with the idea of just letting him grow up a little bit, see if he couldn't get some weight and actually be a 118-pounder. And that's something they have to grow to uh, 118. And most people are trying to cut like crazy, wrecking their lives to get to 118 pounds. Well, with the escape, it's two to one. Two for the takedown, one for the escape. Iowa State Summit on the left and red leads. He has the uh, front headlock on Bays, who's trying to come underneath. Well, he, what he is is he's trapped under there. He, he's kind of <laughs> trying to crawl underneath just to maintain position. He doesn't want to be there. His, the coaches from Oklahoma State would like to see their man start his offense. They like to see him get started. They know that he has some things, but he just hasn't been using them. He's, he's somewhat apprehensive about going ahead and being aggressive. Corey Bays was a three-time high school champion in Oklahoma. Here comes a nice move by Bays. Great balance right there. That was a good move, a start by Perry Summit from Iowa State, but it was great balance by Bays to just shut him off. He looks strong enough and big enough there. That, that was balance. That wasn't. That really was not size. That was he was in the right spot, and Summit tried to hit that little bit of throw. It came in underneath him. He just didn't quite get his body under enough. You're looking at Joe C. He had a rough first part of the year. He's hoping to do better at the end. And Summit has to come out here to tie the match. Referee says Summit is injured. Now this is something that uh, the Cyclones definitely don't want. So I think this really happened in the uh, in that first exchange. My impression was that Summit was complaining about, at least to himself, if not to anybody else, that something hurt fairly early. Well, it looks like it's uh, either in the forearm or the elbow there in his left arm. Let's look at this last. They seem to try to step under and throw. He just doesn't quite get past. Now, he almost has that, but see the balance. He's coming out of there, and yet uh, Bays locks his leg and pulls him back through and then pulls himself up on top with that. Three to two, Summit being looked at by the Iowa State trainer. Okay, gentlemen. And he's ready to go. I think what he did was he gave Summit there a takedown for two and a near fall for two. Yes. And then gave Bays a reversal for two, so the score is really six to three rather than three to two. Yeah. Six to four now as Summit comes out. No, and seven to three, because that summits ahead. Seven to three. We've got to tell you what, we have a brand new scoreboard at Iowa State, a beautiful new, this is supposed to be the best scoreboard in the world, but it's right over our heads, and I'm not as young as I used to, we can't quite look straight up anymore. <laughs> seven to three. As a wrestler, I used to see those scoreboards straight up in the air quite a bit. <laughs> I see Bays is under him right here. He, 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 his coaches don't want him here. He can't get out, and, and Summit's trying to keep him there. It spends a lot of energy and a lot of time when you're trapped under your opponent out of position. 
seven to three with in a three minute first period that has about a minute left. And Corey Bays has looked very good from Oklahoma after losing the first takedown. Well, that second takedown, that was real optional right in there for the referee on judgment. You know, uh, Summit hit him, came all the way through, had him into the position, and it was one where the, he held him there long enough to see it. Now Bays is complaining about a shoulder problem, and that's why the time has been taken here. His left shoulder's a little sore. We are talking before the meet to uh, Jim Gibbons, the coach at Iowa State, who said that they had not practiced this week specifically for the Cowboys at all. And he was a little concerned maybe they might be looking through him. Well, I think they might have looked awfully hard at Iowa University. Yes. And uh, so to try a different tactic, they're trying to not look at all at the Cowboys. Worked a lot on conditioning and technique this week. They worked him real hard, he said. And so he's concerned tonight. He knows it's a tough meet. No matter what Oklahoma State's record is now, they have talent. And they match up pretty well with Iowa State. Well, Summit from Oklahoma State is not wrestling with penetration. He's, he's making some shots, but he just doesn't hit things with enthusiasm. It's not like he's hit. To me as a coach, I'm watching him uh, as a fan should watch the athlete and say, is this guy really happy out there? And he just doesn't look like he's happy. I'm talking about Bayes from Oklahoma State. You know, you look at the expression on his face and you watch the way he he hits things with a snap. Or a lack of snap. That's a nice high crotch. Dump he only right. has nine seconds to finish it here, Chuck. Bays is trying to, really, he's trying to stalemate this position by locking the arm in there, trying not to give it to him. And there it does. There are no points awarded. So for uh, the unhappy man is ahead by four here, CP, at the end of the first match. There's Jim Gibbons. This man will be on top. Okay. Wearing the flowers. You see, uh, Iowa State coaches have them tonight. They have a lot of the old alumni wrestlers back from past years. Second period. Summit really is a sophomore. He, he was uh, at uh, Northern Iowa for a year and then transferred. Summit's up high. He's trying to get a tilt. He's up awfully high. And he lost the position and lost a reversal. Now he's down by six. Not where he expected to be. Now both of these boys have some freestyle experience. That means they like to wrestle on their feet. This is the spot where, where usually freestylers have a little more trouble. When they get down the mat and they give away an arm or they get busted down, it causes them more trouble. So it's important now for Summit to build back and get out of there or Bays could turn him with this power half he's got. Summit is down and he's trailing by six points here. Bob Siddons is watching that half very closely to see it doesn't get out of position. Well, somebody was saying that's a full Nelson because Bays was contemplating between moving his hand in there and putting it on a full. But uh, he said, you heard him on the air. I'm watching it very closely. Okay, Coaches right at Iowa State. Well, seven to five. Now, I'll tell you what, let's get this score straight once and for all here, CP. <laughs> Seven to five is the score, and Summit leads. He just, <laughs> According he just to scored the scoreboard. an escape now. Now it's, it's eight. eight to five. We apologize for the mess up in the scoring here at the beginning, but it is now eight to five in favor of Summit. No wonder Bays had an unhappy look. Well, did, you, did you think Bays was ahead? Yes, I did. <laughs> all that time. <laughs> all that time. Oh, all that time. I was calling that as a, as a Summit getting that. Two point takedown and two point near fall, and then Bay's getting a reversal, so the score went to uh, the, the difference there in our thinking. All right. What's the name of this sport again? <laughs> well, they don't want to be right there. I, I think the Iowa State man being ahead would, would be gladly stay there, but Oklahoma State coaches don't want their man underneath that. So he's making those half shots where he doesn't finish, gets in, and gets trapped under. That's, there's something wrong there. It means that he's not either getting his opponent out of position. He's not making good penetration, or he's extending himself, not finishing. See, there he is again. You, you don't beat good people by getting halfway. Edge, move around, edge. On the edge around. with 10 seconds left to go. This year, the officials call edge often to let one man know that he's going to have to let the other man away from the edge. The inside man has to give the outside man room to move. Long shot, too far out. Summit couldn't quite get anything out of it. And the second period ends. The score is eight to five. 
Although Bays has 40 seconds You're of riding down. time. Okay. Oklahoma State on top. This time, Summit has the We're choice. The third period, fellas. Two minute third period. He takes Bottom down. Top man is set. Top man, you move on. There's Joe C. He had some terrific men in this weight class when he was at Cal Bakersfield. Yes, he had, and they were great takedown men. Now, what he's trying to do now is have his man gain a writing time point, write him long enough. He only needs about 10 more seconds in order to get writing time and then let him go so that uh, the, the one that Iowa State gets for an escape is negated by the writing time point for Oklahoma State. Now he does have the writing time. Now he's in a position to try to hit that power half, but he just does not have the height and the range to be able to score with that. Summits out, leads nine to five. Four point lead after the escape. Goes in again, had to let the arm go, but he still has a high clock. Not very long. He's been very effective on that. He gets in deep under his opponent. You can see Bayes just doesn't penetrate deep on these. He drops down more than he penetrates in. Harry penetrated in, but just stopped on it. Gotta be able to get his man in motion first. Tried to get a fireman's carry or a high crotch, whatever came of it. Well, those two moves are almost the same. You're in the same position, except one you have the arm and the other you release the arm and go ahead and take the, the hip control. 55 seconds to go. No score yet on the team score. We're at 118 pounds with the Cowboys against the Cyclones at Ames. Summit of Iowa State leads nine to five. Open up, both of you. Although the Cowboy has riding time. There he got his hips in underneath. Tries that inside trip. Didn't have the arm control on that. That Ucha Gari is a, it's a judo throw. Warning against uh, Summit for inactivity. Well, he's in the driver's seat by far with only 30 seconds to go in the match. He just doesn't want to get thrown now. He, as long as he'll keep wrestling aggressively and stay out of the throw position, that's the only thing that can hurt him. Well, he's there. Because uh, I believe Summit likes to throw. Yes, he does like to throw. You saw him get one early in the match. That's the four point difference right there. It's gonna end here. Two, there's the last chance throw by Bayes to fail. Bayes gets riding time, but it's still 11 to six in favor of Perry Summit. And after I got my scorecard straightened out, we see that the Cyclones take the lead over Oklahoma State three to nothing in the first match at Hilton Coliseum. Now we go to 126 pounds. For the Oklahoma State Cowboys, Eddie Woodburn, a junior from Cala Mesa, California, against second-ranked Bill Kelly of Iowa State, who, and Kelly, unfortunately, is working on a two-match losing streak. He's, he's, he's got to get it started going here. He's a lot more talent than two losses in a row to anybody. And he's wrestling Woodburn, who is really an 18-pounder, moved up to 126. Kelly of Iowa State, Last year was at 118. He's happy to be up a weight, no doubt about it. He has the front headlock. In, in that position, the objective is to pull a man down off of his knee, off his feet, to get him on his knees. Just couldn't quite do that. Now Woodburn's one of those athletes that followed the coach, came with Coach C from California Bakersfield to Oklahoma State, and then sat out last year. Now he's getting his chance to wrestle as a junior. First period is three minutes long, as you know. Second period is two, the third period is two. A, a fall, of course, open ends up, it. And if one man gets ahead of the other man open by 15 up. points, it's a technical fall. And Woodburn gets an easy, quite an easy single leg pickup. He's made some good motion. He's, he's had good position to get here. Now he isn't scoring, and that's a nice move by Kelly. Kelly just okay. took the arm out of there and went back to the leg himself. And he looks like to be in a much stronger position to get the takedown. He's further out on the leg, that's for sure. And he's good on top. Two to nothing. Cyclones want to pile them up in these lower weights if they can. I think they're going to win this thing going away, Doug. They got the momentum started now, and they got good people coming. Now, what Kelly likes to do so well is he likes to let the man's hips come up a little. Seem trying on what we call a pry, 
where he's under one arm and he's got the legs on, but he'll let his man come up slightly and then he'll take that arm that he's got a hold of and just hip tilt him. He'll just suck him in and pull him up on the hip, dump him back for that quick tilt. Has the arm tied up on the near side. Looks to the bench to see what kind of instructions they people have for him. He's getting all kinds of advice. <laughs> well, he's got a pressure position on top of the man. He hasn't been effective at the thing he likes best, and that's the tilting man. Both of you improve your position. Both of you. Here, Bob Sitton saying, well, here's Kelly up high now. Trying to horse his man over with that. Well, what they do is they isolate the hips, get the hips turned over, and then they come back and start to attack on the head. See, the hips are down. If you can get a man posted on a hip, knee, shoulder, then the objective is to turn him around the door, okay. push that's, him over it. That's the young man who got it started for the Cyclones, Perry Summit. He has to be happy. Even up his record for the year, too. That made it 4-4. Here he's far out on this takedown. He's seeing way out on the leg, out toward the foot. Uses that pressure and leverage to dump him down for the two-point takedown. And that's where the score is, two to nothing. We have half a minute left to go in the first period. Kelly has ridden already a minute and a half. Trying to get a tilt in the last minute. He's almost oh, he lost reversed. It. You bet, and it's now 2-2. Two -two. Just in the last 15 seconds. As he's in on that leg, and as long as he controls the leg, his opponent can't get up. Now he let go of it. So Kelly does have a chance maybe here in that much time. So Woodburn, by being persistent How do you want it? and not You're giving up at down. any point, tied it up at the end of the period. Okay, here we go. Oklahoma State picks up. And Kelly will be down. About a man, you get set, well, he has about a minute, right minute 15 go. writing time, so he's going to try to get out of there before that's erased. Woodburn, Eddie Woodburn, I said he's from California. He was a California collegiate champion once. Good Kelly's out. Nice hand control by Kelly. Three to two now. Kelly leads by one. And he got out in time to save his riding time advantages. That riding time advantage, if one man rides the other man more than a minute, it's a uh, point at the end of the match. You watch Woodburn here, this is more what uh, Coach C's athletes in the past have done. That is, they're in motion, they're trying to take their opponent and either move him or move themselves to get them in so that they have a better angle on it. Kelly wants to tie up, but uh, Woodburn won't let him. No, he doesn't want him in that close. He wants to be more in he control. He wants to be there. Back on that single leg. Kelly blocked him nicely, came right back with the hips. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, sometimes with a lot of people, that single leg is like getting a bear by the tail. <laughs> yeah. You'd rather not have it than have it. Well, I guarantee you there are people that if you get the leg, they're going to get you. Now Here now he has the hips. See how he has that hip trap? This, this looks like it would be easy to get out because he's up so high, but he's in, got those legs in, and that puts the pressure right down on Woodburn's chest. So he's really kind of balancing up there on his sternum and chin. It's a lot of pressure on the upper part of the man's body. I don't think uh, Bob Siddons is going to let him keep this position very long unless something comes of it. Well, it's hard for the bottom man to get up. As soon as he gets one leg free, you can always stick the other one in and knock him down again. So uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the down man. We're in the last 20 seconds now. Kelly goes out to the side with that arm. He's going to try to take it over. Can he hold it? No. Just, just lost the arm in the process. Uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't stop him there for the back points. Near fall. That's the idea of it, though, Doug. To be able to control those hips. End of the last period, the first period, Kelly let Woodburn reverse him with just a few seconds left. This time, he managed to ride him. All the way from the very first few seconds when he escaped and took the man down. It's 5-2. This time, this time Woodburn gets his choice. And he will take up. There's Harold Nichols with Ruth. Well, see, watch him get in on this. Now watch Kelly come right. He posts that foot and blocks the leg. He comes right back through him with the hips. Real good move. Woodburn did not keep his momentum going in. Kelly changed it. Now Woodburn chose down instead of top, Doug, so. He's going to try to score his point. Now he's out. See, the takedown will tie it, but he still has to get riding time back because Kelly has two minutes and a half. 
of riding time, and he will almost certainly have a riding time point. Iowa State won the opening match at 118, 11-6. Perry Summit beat Corey Bays. And so it's the Cyclones three, the Cowboys one. And again, in on the leg comes Woodburn. Well, he's in again now. His motion is stopped, and this is where you get beat. You get in underneath your opponent, lose your motion, don't have a good angle. The other man has Let's go position. Again, gentlemen, both up. And in fact, that's the best thing that's happened to Woodburn so far in that that's single leg right. position. He didn't get taken down. He's again, back he's again in. now. You see, he's, he's lost his hips. He's got to get his hips in underneath. Kelly just blocks him out. He gets there and can't finish it. Now uh, Kelly's going to get this front headlock on him and try to go from there. Didn't quite. But Woodburn has been able to reach him. There's no doubt about that. He's been able to get that single on him. Okay, so that's, that's the spot. And he gets in, though. He doesn't want to be here, of course. But no. He's been in a lot better position than this. He's going to lose this at not only the position, but two maybe. Maybe four because he's got his back behind him. It's now seven to three after that takedown, and Kelly is turning him. All he's got to do is just lever him down easy. He's, all, he's got everything trapped. He's just got to settle on it. Don't be in a hurry. There he, he has goes. A half a minute to go. There he goes. He got it. With 29 seconds to go. Let's look at it again, the fall, how it, how it came about. Well, what's he's got him here, it's a matter now of just using the arm as a lever against his opponent. See, the shoulder is posted down underneath him and the arm is trapped, so all he has to do is just settle into it. Just, you know, stay off the knees and let the body just move out toward the head, letting the arm be a lever against the man, the shoulder is a post, he turns around, now he, once he turns into there, he's really trapped, go, arms gentlemen. up tight, we still have a little time flatter in a pancake. Relax, there he gets caught right there. And that's the way it goes when you get on your back against Bill Kelly. Nine to nothing, the Cyclones lead after 126. Now this match at 134, particularly the way things are going here, could be a good one because Jim, Jeff Gibbons has the crowd behind him. Iowa State's on a roll. He's wrestling Leo Bailey, eighth ranked for the Cowboys, and Gibbons gets the first shot at a takedown. He has a single leg. Bailey's controlling the wrist. Keeping Gibbons from coming on in behind him. That's, now he's got in behind. He lost that. But Whizzer may save him here on the edge. No, oh, right. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Still a scramble. Bailey took a chance, and it may pay off. We'll see. Well, it's more or less just if I can get a hold of enough, maybe I can come out of it, or maybe I can stalemate it. They had to call it a stalemate, but he almost got caught in his back. You bet. He put himself there trying to just go through there. The first time these men met was when uh, Gibbons was a freshman wrestling as an unattached in the Midwest tournament last year, and he beat Bailey. And look what at the time looked like a huge upset. He threw him for a four or five point move late in the match and won. I think that since Bailey has won at least once. Open up, gentlemen. Open up. Well, Bailey is a man that comes Something from uh, a tradition of winning. He's he's a three-time yeah, Oklahoma yeah, champion and has a probably one of was one of those child prodigies coming out of Oklahoma everybody thought was going to be the next three or four time national champion he just hasn't lived up to the star billing that he had for himself I know he's frustrated by that I know him as a young man and he does like to throw he's a great freestyle Greco wrestler and and Gibbons would be wise to go back to that same low level attack he started with Bailey has finished almost three years ago he finished six in the nationals Gibbons is a redshirt freshman from Ames. Tremendous high school prospect. These, these fellows have pretty much both were stars in high school. Well, the age that Bailey has should give him the edge, but I was very impressed with Gibbons the last time I saw him. Yeah, against uh, Greg Randall. That was a very close match. Well, he just wrestled uh, not like a freshman. <laughs> He wrestled like a star, like a man that belonged there. And he went after Bailey here, the first move. We've gone about halfway through the first period, which will be three minutes long. They start on their feet, you know, in the first period. Second period, whichever man uh, in alternating. Let's do more than that, gentlemen. They're Warning both more. ways. Oh, Gets a choice whether he wants up or down. Or let the other man have his choice. Get something going. That's a fairly appropriate double warning. Neither man was doing anything. 
They're on the edge of the mat here at Hilton Coliseum. Nine to nothing, the Cyclones over the Cowboys. Now this front headlock uh, is not successful for Bailey because he's got his head up in the top of the back. If you really want to use it, you got to get your head off to the side, put your ear in his armpit. Bob Sittens, referee, you can hear him. He has the microphone. Now half a minute to go in the first period. Gibbons against Bailey. Jeff Gibbons and Leo Bailey. Cowboys got burned twice here in the first two matches. Second one especially when Kelly pinned Woodburn. Well, they have to win this if they're going to get in this meeting. They lose this one, uh -oh. it could be a long, long evening. And Gibbons is in. Bailey's not going to score when Gibbons is on the leg. Only four seconds to go in the first period. That's Tim Krieger. You'll see him up at 150 later. Nobody's beat him, beaten him this year. He has two draws, but he's undefeated. First period ends with no score. Bailey gets. There's Kelly who just had the big win. Bailey says, I'll let the other man make the choice. Gibbon says, I want to go down. Gibbons will start on the bottom. Move right into it, and away we go. Leo Bailey. There aren't as many homegrown prospects on this team this year. Oh, they are. Bays, Bailey, and Kuzalina. That's all. Three out of ten. There is. They've had a history of taking a lot of the Oklahoma athletes. And, uh, Coach C moved over, and a couple of boys came with him from California. He recruited a couple. He needs that time to recruit the athletes that he wants. Right now, he's working more or less with the athletes from another era, another coaching staff. Sometimes they don't want to make the adjustments that uh, you might want. Gibbons on the bottom, missed on a switch earlier. Hasn't been able to do what he wants to do here. He's out of bounds now, and uh, Bob Sittens calls him back. They used up about half a minute. Well, this is kind of a throwback to a style we haven't seen much on, on uh, Iowa Public Television so far, the style of wrestling we're watching right now. We haven't seen very many uh, athletes down on the mat much this year. Move right on the way we go. Jim Gibbons coaching his brother Jeff. There's a switch try again. Oh, we almost got caught in the middle of it at that time, but he's still working. So one of the hard parts for athletes today is uh, if you don't get the guy turned over in 10 or 15 seconds, a lot of times the top man just cuts you loose. Well, Bailey's not doing that. That's making it a little tough on Gibbons here to affect his own escape or reversal. He's ridden, uh, he's ridden Jeff about a minute almost, a minute so far, 55 seconds. This is, uh, as we say many times, this is often a problem for the younger wrestlers, the first year, second year men, getting out from underneath where they're not used to being in high school. They're never there. And when they're that successful, they usually don't have anybody that stays with them very long. They don't learn how to do it. Now he's in good position here. Bailey's hips are trapped, but he's got a leg trap. Three of the hips, he can come out of this. Might have to let go and turn the other way for one. One point. That's what he wanted was that one. It was a tough escape for Gibbons, but he always gives you the impression of, of knowing where he is and having good orientation on the mat. Yes, he has a fine feel. And he's the man that's penetrated the legs twice. Of course, Bailey would like to throw him. He'd like to be in here where he could pitch him, but I think Jeff knows enough about that there. See, there's that same inside trip that they tried. And I think another reason, I don't know if uh, wrestlers keep memories like that around, but I remember that first match between these two men last year when the first time I'm sure Bailey had seen Gibbons, Gibbons threw him. <laughs> and he probably surprised him. Like to prove that uh, it was a fluke. <laughs> well, at least got his hands full with this young Jeff Gibbons from Iowa State. There's no question. You're talking about a senior All-American redshirt against a freshman without very much experience. And Jeff Gibbons is, is putting it right to him now. So he's hanging on this front headlock, Doug. This is not the spot you want to be. Don't want to hang on. Don't want to have your head over the middle of the bat. One to nothing. Gibbons leads on an escape in a second period. Each man has been warned once. A minute and eight riding time advantage belongs to Bailey. Look at that record for Oklahoma State. Now, is Titles. that something? I mean, Those, but 
The problem, Doug, is since 1971, they, that, they haven't had a national championship. They're frustrated with that. You don't think that's poison in the craw? All that history behind them, starting way back in 1915, and 27 out of 55? I mean, that's half of the national championships that won by this, this team. That's tradition and history. Bailey got out very nicely and managed to keep the head trapped as he came out. Well, yes, and he kept he kept the Gibbons from erasing the riding time, so he still now has one minute and four seconds riding time. Deep penetration. Didn't finish it. Just has to be able to get around that thing. Got in there deep. Now see how he's keeping his head down. As long as he can keep the head down, the man can't improve his position. Yeah, Bailey put pressing Gibbons' head down, and the referee says, you've got to call this one off for a couple of reasons. One thing, it's a tough position on Bailey's knee. Perry Hubble, remember Perry wrestling just a couple of years ago for Iowa State? They have a lot of their alumni in the crowd tonight. They walked them in ahead of time, and maybe we'll see some others as uh, night goes along. Leo Bailey walking it off. We're in the third period with less than a minute and a half to go. It's one-to-one. -one. Bailey has just a few seconds of riding time. Okay. Well, we might have had that uh, leg cocked and cramped. There's Kelly Ward. Ah, uh, the FBI is here. <laughs> He's uh, working for the U.S. government now. He might not want you saying that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's wearing a disguise. This is uh, Leo Bailey. You see the position on the knee. That's why the knee hurts. He's and he has to keep Gibbons down on that knee too, because if he lets him up, he loses a position. That's right. Got to hold it right there and hope for the stalemate. Plus, it gives him a little time now. There's only a minute and a half to go in the match. It's almost like he's starting over again. And really, although the score is one to one, Bailey has the riding time, so he's a, he's ahead, and Gibbons has to get a takedown to win. Now Gibbons got finger in the eye, I think. Bob Simpson asks him if he needs timeout. Gibbons says no. Iowa State nine, Oklahoma State zero. Bailey makes the shot. Well, he knows that he can't just sit on this. I mean, you're not going to be in this arena with a stalling warning already on you, minute and a half to go, and then try to sit on a, on a four-second writing time lead. That's not going to be that way. So he's got to go. But Bailey owned the position there for about half a minute on the edge of the map. We're now 50 seconds from the end, and the Iowa State crowd gets in it. They know that Gibbons has to take Bailey down. Will Bailey be wise to make his own offensive shots or get a hold of him, because Gibbons has good penetration once he gets started. There well, he is. That was an awfully pretty high crotch move, if he can finish it. Well, he's got to be able to get off the leg, get elevation to finish it. Elevation, he can finish it. No, nope. do it. And he's really locked right now. Bailey's holding him in this position with the with the locked around the throat, trying to run some time off. The Iowa State coaching staff was saying that uh, that was a choke move. He didn't have the arm. He should have been penalized. And Bob Simmons couldn't see it or if, if it was actually happening. No. He can't breathe. He had his well, arm across. He was on the chin. Okay. He was on the chin there. Now, Jeff Gibbons is uh, time asking for time here after that very like tight that. front headlock. Yeah. Okay. That's something we asked you. I know, and I was watching it closely. We only have 14 okay. seconds to go here, so <laughs> Jeff is going to have to get himself Don't come ready and uh, take the man down. He's going to make that shot again. As I said last time, Bailey B. Wise to keep him right here and hang on to him or get in on his own because Gibbons gets started. Just a few seconds to go. Just a few. He had to try it. Yes, he did. He threw a headlock and couldn't make it. And so Bailey gets the victory. The takedown makes it three to one, and the riding time makes it four to one. Tough victory for Leo Bailey, and Oklahoma State is on the board. Nine to three now, the Cyclones over the Cowboys. After 134 pounds, and that's Leo Bailey who got his team back in the, back on the scoreboard. And here we go at 142, this should be a good one.
the national champion against the seventh ranked man. Joe Gibbons of Iowa State, ranked number one against Luke Scove, ranked number seven. Two years ago, I think it was two years ago, maybe three, Scove beat Gibbons, so he's tough. Well, they beat him in the finals of the Big Eight when it was one of those one-to-one, -one, one one-to-one criteria losses, but not again. You don't think so? No, I, Joe Gibbons has just come on. He is, is really a man and commands this weight in the country. A dresser from over to Iowa is, is his closest match, but he he could lose to a guy like Scovo who has the talent, but I, it's just, I think Joe Gibbons is, uh, come on, is too much of a man. Summit beat Bays 11 to 6 at 118. Kelly pinned Woodburn six minutes and 31 seconds at 126 pounds. And Leo Bailey finally won for Oklahoma State at 134. I see what you mean, Chuck. You get in on that double leg, and Gibbons is awfully strong. He's powerful. Yes, he, he has such great hip presence. He can control his hips and yours once he gets started. And of course, he gets a lead. If he can get ahead of you by, by one, it's extremely difficult to catch catch up to him because he controls the tempo of the man. And really the only way that Scove has a chance to beat him is, to, is for him to control the tempo. He can't let Gibbons get started. We're sparring for position here in the first period. Remember that later on, our Iowa Public Television Sports will bring you a special 10th anniversary edition of Off the Mat. And we'll meet uh, Mike Mann, who was a three-time All-American of Iowa State. Now Gibbons is in on the leg, single leg. What will he do with it? He's got several options. What he doesn't want to do is let him get off. But he went, he off. went off. The critical factor there is to find the foot or find the hip. You can't hang in between. Yes. Yeah, you warn. You got to move in. He warned uh, Scove that time. Well, he warned him right when Gibbons made the shot into the leg. And of course, <laughs> Gibbons would like to get a score in this first period. He still has about a minute to go, but he likes the lead. You don't see very often when he's behind. On the edge of the mat, crowd doesn't like it. <laughs> well, he does have a lot of pressure on his opponent, and it may not always be that he's that he's shooting, quote, shots, but uh, he is making offensive moves into him. He, he has the pressure in. He's trying to get Scove to push back. It's the pressure back that lets him win, lets him go. So he's controlling it, but he's, he's pushing into him. One point. Let's go back. You cannot back up. You've got to go forward. Scove has been going forward. penalized the point. One that up there is uh, Eric Volker. You just can't back up. Who actually uh, that whistle. You move in, came out right of that here. match with, Goldman. with Dwayne Goldman with a stress fracture, and he's out for a while. That's took, too bad. He is having a great year for a freshman. Took for anybody. The, took the cast off that he was wearing for a few days. Let's go back. Gibbons is definitely the aggressor. He has the lead here with about 36 seconds to go. You, you don't like to think that the other man is stalling. Of course, their team wouldn't think that at all. But, and, and it's not like it's obvious, just that Gibbons has got so much pressure in. The other man has to stay giving pressure back, and that's what will make his offense effective. Stove is staying in there tough, actually, uh, this first period. 9-3, to three, Iowa State over Oklahoma State. We're in the fourth match. We're at 142. Well, he's doing warning what he has to you. do to try to this win man this. gets another point. I'm warning both of you. You're not doing anything, gentlemen. Okay, here we go. Now, Joe C. doesn't like that. He, he knows that this, his man has been penalized twice. Give it to one of them are doing anything, Let's Joe. Either one of them are doing anything, we're going to have to wrestle. Yes, go right ahead and say it. Well, he's shoving, but he's getting more motion and movement. Well, he's getting more motion and movement. Come on. Over here, you have your I don't know if you heard him or not, but uh, what he, exactly what he was saying. He's saying that Joe Gibbons is just shoving. Right. Now, neither one of you did very much that period. You got four minutes to wrestle, let's wrestle. Bottom man set, top man on. Two to one. It was Gibbons' choice. He took down. Hips and hand control. That was an earned escape, not a gimme. Three to one. Move around. Let's go back. Three to one now. All right, move in. 
Well, because there were no takedowns in that first period, Scove now has the riding time, four seconds worth. Yes, but he doesn't have a point. No. He, so it's uh, two penalty oh, points nothing. against him, oh, and an right. escape for Gibbons makes it three. That's right. It was uh, it was not three to one. It's three nothing. It was a warning against uh, Scove, against Gibbons, and not a penalty. And here's what uh, Coach C with, from Oklahoma State was saying. When Gibbons gets him in that two-on-one, all he's doing is shoving him. He's not doing anything with it. And, and Gibbons has those good hips. Well, anytime Scove comes to him, he just drops the hips in and blocks him open, shuts the motion off. Gibbons wanted to walk right in and body lock with him you know that time. Two gentlemen of you see Cyclones together, nine to three. Together, but you're gonna have to open up to get a good match. Now they have seen each other before. Moves have to be first, finished. First penetration in this period by Gibbons. Well, now he has the leg, now it's primarily a matter now of securing it. But once he's captured it, now he's gotta be able to do something with it. Still doesn't have it. Still not there as long as he Skull can keep the head down. But Gibbons, see how he fights through that and gains elevation. Now he's gonna to try to dump him down. He's got pressure down on those hands. Five nothing. Move up, move up right away. Went from three nothing to five nothing in a hurry, didn't it? <laughs> well, he made two two shots into the leg and got one of them for a score. See how he is now. He, he fights through that head and gets elevation. Now he clears the leg and then uses his other leg to dump the man over and freeze the wizard. As soon as there's pressure down on the hands, it's two points. Gibbons on top. He's a tough rider, as you might expect. He only has one fall this year. He's very powerful, and you see the arm is holding Scove down. Not very many people can hold you down with an arm around your waist, but he's, he's very powerful. Scove gets up now. Gibbons takes him right back down. He's obliged to do that. Good side lift. Now there's a nice little move by Skov. Did that just head spin around, tucked, and great athletic talent. Gibbons just spun right with him. Okay, let's look at riding time now. It's Gibbons' way, 35 seconds worth. He leads five to nothing. We have a third period to go. And Skov goes down. Okay, bottom man is set. Joe Gibbons, national champion last year at 142 pounds. Top man, you move on. Which, considering the average weight of a young man in the country, is probably just about where the best wrestlers are, the most of them anyway. You bet. That was a tough weight class in there, 142, 150. Come out of that one, you are really a man. Let's just hold him with that arm around the waist. Let's go back. He has great presence. And as I said, he just did dominating this weight class this year outside of that uh, dresser man, man over at Iowa. Top man, you move on. Yeah, Dresser, Dresser and Gibbons have been the class this year. Now Scove is out, his first score, 5-1. Riding time, 49 seconds worth for Gibbons. Now to be effective against a man like Gibbons, Scove really has to get him moving. Can't just go ahead and attack him head on, because you'll, you'll run into all of his power. In other words, you have to be able to get a, an angle on him, something like that. Get him yes. moving to the side, and don't take his hips straight on. But Gibbons, Gibbons made the move. Great, that's his back on the leg again now. He's got good position. Finds the foot, hits the dump. Touch the knee, let go of the knee. Top man. Take down on a single. One point. Just releases him intentionally now. Yeah, I think he senses that Scove is beginning to go away from him now. Mm -hmm. uh, that takedown was easier. So that's straight into Gibbons' power right there. Just shuts it off. Seven to two in favor of Gibbons. We have Krieger against Kuzalina coming up next. I think Kuzalina. No, I think they Silva. both Silva down. All right, it'll, all right, it'll be Silva at 150 for Oklahoma State. We'll see when we watch him. Now that single leg, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. I'd be surprised if it did. That's a powerful wizard by Gibbons. Let's go back. We're a half a minute from the end. Well, Joe has done an outstanding job in transition over the years, I think, in wrestling all the way through a match. He isn't trying to just sit on this now. You know, he's still trying to get some more points. He's making good offensive efforts. One isn't good enough anymore. Now he's trying to get two or three or four. That took half of the remaining 30 seconds. Offense. 
Very countered Gibbons made that offense. And that might look like he was running off, but the only way the man can go is the way he is pushing him. So he didn't get called for intentionally going out. Nine seconds to go. Long shot by Sko. And Gibbons can just last the period right here. Okay, guys, that's it. No riding time. Joe is a few seconds short, so it's 7-2. Gibbons over Sko. At 142 pounds, Iowa State wins its third match in the first four. You thought that uh, Cyclones might start to rack it up? Well, I think maybe you might be right. We'll have to see here from now on, but Gibbons has put it up 12 to 3. Cyclones over the Cowboys. And it's always fun, I think, to, to look into these young prospects that are coming up. Here's, a, here's an undefeated freshman for Iowa State, Tim Krieger. Some say this is going to, this guy is going to win more than one national championship. Uh, he's a terrific prospect for the Cyclones, and he's wrestling against Vince Silva. Yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me if he won more than one, but you don't like to put that kind yeah, of pressure on somebody. He doesn't need that kind of pressure. He'll get it on, his, on himself. He just has great natural reaction. The, the guy has a, a real feel. That time he was just on the line. His foot just stepped out of bounds when he was trying to get the takedown. Tim Krieger is ranked second in the country at this weight, even though he's a redshirt freshman, his first time out. Open up, fellas. He's strong. He likes to get in and lock up. He has terrific balance. And he has a heart. Yes, definitely. Important factor. Yeah, he loves to win. And he, and he doesn't like to lose. That's another part of it. Everybody likes to win. Yes. Well, it doesn't have all the motion that everybody would, would anticipate. You know, they like to see a guy look real flashy. And sometimes he looks like he's out of position with straight arms, but his reaction is quickness, balance. Oh, a beautiful field pick, pick by Silva. Now, this is Silva is a fairly effective on top. You can see how he rides one arm under and up around and catching the throat. And when you, it's when you reach in to grab at these that your hands usually get tied up, and that's what causes you the trouble. So Krieger has to come off the bottom here. Vince Silva of California. See the arm under the arm, you can see he just pushes out with that elbow. That keeps the man forward. Then the arm across up on top of the throat. There was an attempted roll by, by Krieger. He didn't like to be in that position where the other man had his heels because there's only one thing you can do then. You have to just, just try to drive yourself out of it. In the center, Silva got the first takedown. Oklahoma State's rangy 150-pounder. Well, if there's a thing that a young man, any young man, needs to learn, it's how to change the tempo, how to get into a match where you might be ahead or behind, and how you shift gears and get, you know, change the the rhythm of the match. That's probably what the season is helping Tim Krieger with more than anything else is, is not to go out and start slow and then keep it slow, but to increase the tempo in the middle of a match. He needs to do that now. Krieger's been uh, nagged by little injuries through the air. I guess a couple of ankle problems you see as a wrist tape. Something going, guys. So he gets himself out of position there a little bit. His head's down, his legs are straight, his arms are extended out. The great athletic talent overcomes that. As time goes on, he'll do less of that and, and be almost impossible to beat. He's already, he's already almost impossible to beat. As 12 he, to he, three. As he improves his position, it's gonna be, be uh, tougher on opponents. 12 to three is the score. Cyclones over the Cowboys after four matches at Hilton Coliseum, the Oklahoma State Cowboys against the Iowa State Cyclones. Good first period for Silva. Got the only takedown. Two to one. There's Mike Land, another of the former Iowa State wrestlers who won national titles. Mike Mann sitting up there next to him. You'll be looking at him off the mat here in a little while. A lot of man is set. As he stands up and look, he just comes right back, catches that heel. Just stepping up too close. That, that was Almost the casual. Now Krieger's pretty good in here. He likes those little hip tilts. Silva Control. had the choice and uh, took down. Going. 
Well, he's trying to keep a wide base. Here's where Krieger, he'll, he'll dump underneath you with one leg, control the waist, and then tip you to your back and get those easy two-pointer tilts. Silva's going to try to just avoid that. You know, he's, he's kind of in command right here with a two-to-one score. He's going to try to avoid getting tipped, keeping a wide base and hanging on to things. There he Silva's wrestled a good match so far. Well, it's, just, it's, it's all he can attempt to do. And I see he's got him loaded right now, but he doesn't have the back exposed. Couldn't quite make the tip. But as time starts to eat away right here, this is where Krieger can get himself in a little bit of a hurry and maybe lose the position. Boy, has he got those hips torqued now. Silva's hips are posted and they're turned all the way to the side. See how that is? See, it turned so wide. He punishes you on top, doesn't he, Doug? Yeah. Not me. <laughs> Silva. Your body doesn't bend the way he's trying to bend Silva. But now he wants, to, he wants Silva to try to get up. He wants him to raise his hips up so he can cut underneath him and try to dump him over. But Silva still leads, two to one. Silva still has the takedown and Krieger only the escape. He's just, he's just bunching up, trying to protect himself. This is where Krieger wants to be. No, he doesn't want him here. Get a little careless in there, he could lose two. That could be dangerous this time with only 15 seconds to go, and now he can't get careless. He has uh, enough for a riding time advantage now, a minute and five seconds. 15 seconds to go. Silva asked for a little time there. Okay, here we go, guys. And here we go back to the center. That is Vince Silva from Santa Maria, California. Wrestled about as, as smart a match as you can wrestle against the Krieger here so far. Yep, he leads two to one. And in spite of the riding time advantage of Krieger. What really he's trying to do is he's trying to keep from getting tipped by keeping his hips low. Well, if Krieger can tip him, it would change the match completely. But he hasn't been able, Krieger has not been able to do it. He rode him through the whole second period. Al Nason is here too. One of a lot of a number of 190 pound champions in the past for Iowa State's wrestling teams. Okay. Al Nason. Jim Gibbons now, present day coach. We start the third period. And Krieger had his choice. He wanted to go up. Well, it's uh, really two to two because he has writing time, so take down for either man is going to really be critical. Like two cats right there, aren't they? They really are. At the edge of the match. That's Eddie Bannock. Such a career he's had as a wrestler, Olympic champion. He's trying to get his 150 pounder up into the lead here though. It's two to one in favor of Silva, but Krieger has riding time. We're in the third period. Silva has wrestled a first rate match. Well, both men have grabbed the hold of the other man's wrist. They're kind of hanging on to each other. Once you get a hold of the man, you know where he is, and that's when they, you know, and he's trying to pull free. It's when you sometimes get caught. He comes back on you. These matches are important. The, uh, the Cyclones figure to win this one, and they don't want to let it get away because they're going to get into some tough matches up later with people such as Erickson. There's a warning against Silva. Well, so Krieger really hasn't been effective with his offense. That maybe is an indication of some of that lack of position that I was talking about. He needs to be able right. to improve his positioning so his offense would be easier for him. 23 seconds to go. You know, when you bend over and lean out and reach at a guy, it puts his feet a long way away from you, so it's hard to affect the takedown. Can't get in deep enough on him. Very little time left. 
just penalized Silva a point right there. And that's going to cost him the match. You got to do more. Two right. seconds, and Krieger is going to win it now. All right, move in. So for the second uh, time we've seen him in a row, the other time was against Iowa, a penalty against the opponent at the end. Made a difference in the final score. Made a it? difference. And the riding time gives it to Krieger, three to two. I don't think he's real pleased with that match. No, he can't be. 15 to three now is the score. And uh, Iowa State does have to be pleased with that. Cyclones up by 12, halfway through. Tim Krieger, the winner, three to two. That's the end of the 150-pound match. There's the team score as we come back to college wrestling, our 10th anniversary season. Iowa State 15 and Oklahoma State three after 150 pounds. We hope you enjoyed that. We hope you enjoyed that one, that uh, Mike Mann feature. Uh, and he's here in the crowd tonight, as you know. He was. Uh, there's Harold Nichols, too, with Ruth Nichols. During the intermission, Chuck and I, CP and I, went out and gave uh, an Iowa Public Broadcasting certificate, an award, to uh, Harold Nichols for his encouragement of our college wrestling over the years. Well, there's uh, a lot of people that don't understand that wrestling can be televised. Can you believe that? I mean, in other parts of the country, people literally are unaware that uh, we televise wrestling here in the Midwest and that people like it and they actually watch it. Harold Nichols. Yes, he, he was talking about televising wrestling many, many years ago. And uh, well, finally it came to pass. He had that dream. He had a vision of what could be done and it's taken place and people do enjoy it. And there's what we have still ahead of us, Wisconsin and Lehigh. That'll be from Lehigh. Courtesy of WLVT, that's uh, next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Iowa State against UNI. Week following, Iowa and Oklahoma State. That's another Saturday night match. UNI and Drake, and then the second match from Ames of Iowa State and Iowa. Here we go, 158 pounds now. Bill Tate of Iowa State, 16 and 3 this year against Angelo Cusalina of Oklahoma State, 158 pounds. Well, this is a shift. They've moved Kuzalina, their normal 50-pounder, up to 158. And uh, I don't think he can handle Tate. Tate's had a good year. He's had a, a good start. He's a nice, nice, talented athlete. I didn't get anything out of that. He was close in there. You can't afford to lose those in national competition at all. You get it that deep. It was almost a desperation attempt by Kuzalina to avoid getting taken down, and it worked. Bill Tate. Waterloo Columbus High School. Near far, near far, near far. Let's go. Where he won a state championship. Inside, inside. Get inside, Angelo, near far. Most of the people at this level have won a state championship. Every once in a while you run across a, a real standout who never did win, but blooms late. Well, there's still room for people that have ambition, up, even in, a, even in wrestling, even in college at this level. But you're right, it doesn't happen too often. Well, I think of people, uh, Ben Peterson was one, I believe, who never. Let's go back to the middle, guys. I don't believe won a state title. And uh, Eric Volker right now for Iowa State, who's missing there, right the match now, but it's come on very strong without that kind of tr success. You saw the Iowa State bench. There's no score here at 158. Makes a lot of difference, too. This is like starting the meet over again after a 10-minute intermission or so. The tempo is yet to be set. Yes, and uh, right now, Kuzalina right is just attempting to hold on to the head, and Tate's trying to keep a hold of the arm just to avoid uh, losing position right here. They're not doing very much, Doug. Started out with something they haven't done much lately. Tate on the right from Iowa State, whose team leads by 12. Summit beat Corey Bays at 118. Kelly pinned Eddie Woodburn at 126. He continually scored, countering off Woodburn's single legs, and finally... Stuck him off one. And then Joe Gibbons, well, Jeff Gibbons lost to Leo Bailey 4-1. to one. That's the only win so far for the Cowboys. Joe Gibbons beat Luke Scove 7-2. to two, And Tim Krieger, on a last-minute penalty point, edged Vince Silva 3-2 to two at 150. He didn't really mean that, did he? <laughs> well, Kuzalina suddenly remembered he had another appointment after he got about halfway under. And that's what's happened in this match so far. Well, they just have 
been a little hesitant. Now he's in on that. Maybe try to come across the top too soon. Tate's coming over with his body. Maybe just a little bit too soon. He has to, he has to stay over there. That's where he wants to be, but he needs his arm through with it. He doesn't uh -oh. want to let Kuzelina get in behind him. He doesn't want to sit down here. He That's dangerous on the knee. That knee right here. Watch him untangle. And I'm watch sure Tate kiss. didn't want to have to settle for that. Okay. He had the superior position immediately and then lost it. Well, he's had it a, a couple of times he's had position. <laughs> We're in the last half minute of the first period. Well, these, may, these may be strategy matches for Oklahoma State, Doug. I'm, I'm not sure. The, uh, watching Silva and Kuzelina so far, they, they have kind of wrestled like they're trying to hold it close and maybe win it if they can. Now that, that wasn't really a, a single leg. That was like, I'll reach out there and grab it, and maybe it's there, I'll get it. But I'm not going to commit to it. End of the first period, no score. You have your choice, Iowa State. Choice goes to Tate. You're going down, Oklahoma State, you'll be on top. We go into the second period, fellas. Sums it up pretty well. Bill Tate. Bottom man, you get set. Had a good record last year, even though you move on. he didn't get to wrestle quite that much. He had Dave Ewing to contend with. Well, now he tries to pull him right into that little crab ride. You can see Tate trying to pull his hips free. Nice. Good balance. And he comes right back in, trying to change the tempo of the match. You see Kuzalina just holding him here. If you really want to win, say you were behind by two or three, you wouldn't be hanging in this position with your head up over the top. Let's go back, guys. And not in, not any motion. Open up in the middle, fellas. Half a minute gone, second period. He's trying to catch Tate out of position. You know, he's trying to get him so that he gets a little bit anxious. That's that's the way it reads to me. You know, he's got him two Let's or three go, times. Tate's made the offense. Kuzalinas stopped him. Now, maybe he's trying to just catch him. Maybe waiting for Tate's concentration to wander a little bit. Well, he caught him there just leaning. That snap down almost caught Tate all the way off guard. Open up, fellas. Take Open up. A little too far. Yep. You get a little anxious. You know, you, you know you're better, you feel you're better, and things aren't going the way you want it to go. Sometimes you get a little careless. So Tate leads just by the escape. Both of you One open to up, nothing. Let's get something going. You just hit it and you stop, both of you. I agree with you, Bob. Bob Siddons, referee. Well, at least Tate's hit in. I haven't seen Kuzalina make the offense yet. You know, that, that's the thing that you're looking at. See, that's really not an offense because that's lateral. And when a man is standing five feet away from you, you don't take him down by going five feet to your right or left. There's a good high cross, but again, he's having trouble stepping across. Well, see, he's, Kuzalina has good, good, uh, Flexibility, and all he's trying to do now is just stop him from coming over there. It's a dangerous to come over, you know, because Kuzalina can, can try to heist him when he comes. So he's just has made all the offense, hasn't been able to make the score. And so it has to be a stalemate again. Let's look at the clock. Just a few seconds here. And Kuzalina's in the match. Trails only one to nothing. There has been no warning yet against either man. Oh, he's definitely in the match, and as I said, it's been, it's really, in my opinion, it's been Tate doing all the wrestling, Kuzalina doing most of the countering, but that might be the plan. I don't know what was said to the athletes before they made this shift up and before they started to wrestle. Now Kuzalina wants to go down, try to match up with an escape himself. That would make it one-to-one, -one, and then they'd go on their feet again. Bottom man is set, top man, you move on. Tate can be tough on top. He needs to be now for a little while. Now he tried to do the same thing that Kusalina did to him. Pull him into a, what they call a crab ride. Now he does have the arm, and uh, in this position he can get into the chicken wing, can be very tough on top. He's got, he has the body to be able to handle this. Kuzalina is getting his base and is able to come to his feet. But you got to know what you want to do with it. If you get the chicken wing, you either uh, are going to turn the guy over with it, you know, which means that you got to get out and really put a lot of pressure on him. On the side. 
Yes, you got to get out the side. Uh, everybody remembers Dan Gable. He got a chicken wing on. Oh, there was hardly Gable any line. way that you weren't going over or, or he was going to pull your arm out of the socket. Good move by Cusolino off the whistle. Good reaction by Tate to counter that. Oh, nice move by Tate coming back. So there have been no points exchanged. Oh, but he has the bottom leg. If he pull his arm off in the back, he would have had him on his back. Well, he didn't think he knows where he is. He's going to lose everything. And a reversal. Lost his concentration for sure in the middle of that match. He wants some time out, but it was not the time to call for it, maybe, huh? No, you, uh, you wrestle on through those spots and then worry about it getting it later. Two to one, Kuzalina almost, let's see what happened here. So he comes right across him right here and he's got him close to his back. But he's, see how the arm is way up deep in the crotch. Now what he needs to do is pull his right arm up over top, but he stays back around the back, doesn't keep the pressure toward the head. And Kuzalina starts coming right back through him again. It's almost like he starts right in here. He's looking at the referee like saying uh, something's wrong. You don't see him talking to him like something happened to him and Kuzalina comes back across and gets a reversal. Well, uh, Kuzalina wrestling, as you say, as if he were biting for time, got it. Oh, he got a lead on that. Two to one is the score. A reversal by Kuzalina over Bill Tate at 158 pounds. That's the Oklahoma State heavyweight. He's ranked first in the country. Tom Erickson. We saw him in the Midwest tournament, perhaps you remember that. We didn't see much of him because he was wrestling Gary Albright. There's the results of the Midwest, by the way, which Iowa State won. Northern Iowa finished third. But uh, Albright defaulted very early because of a knee twist, and uh, Erickson won. We'll see him wrestle John Heropolis later. Well, he's ready, but he's behind, so it's... see if Kuzalina tries to dump him in his lap again in that crab ride or if he changes to another strategy. Well, as we say, this, this really starts the second match here, the second meet, because after 158, one team can take the tempo over from another after that intermission. And Tate hasn't yet brought the crowd out. Well, he has to attempt to take his opponent to the mat. Can't keep him up there. Let's go back. 56 seconds to go. Kuzalina leads by one. You can hear the referee saying, don't hang on top. It's hard to stay with him when Tate keeps his hips free and moves like that. Nice escape. So we're back on the feet. There have been no takedowns yet. Well, Tate has made the, the, really, he's made the offensive shots. Hasn't been able to finish them, but he's been there. And as you say, maybe he has to, oh, he has to get a good shot, not be too impatient about it, get caught out of position. Like that. Move in. When I blow the whistle, I want both of you moving right in. Coach C is concerned. Now there's one of the first efforts his man's made in to his opponent. He's gonna have to make a better one than that with no time left. Didn't have the position. Tate has the takedown. Going to win it right there. And he did. Well, Tate had the single. That time, Kuzalina didn't let him come in quite, quite far enough. Tried to step past him too soon. Tate dropped his hips and scored the takedown to win. So for the second match in a row, the Cyclones pick one up at the final buzzer and take an 18 to three lead after 158 pounds. Now we're coming to 167 and we look to see if Mark Van Tyne is gonna wrestle for Oklahoma State and he is not. He's been injured and I think now with a score 18 to three, Joe C figures that discretion would be the better tactic He's going to let Brian Boone wrestle against Mike Van Arsdale. So Van Arsdale definitely should be favored here. He's ranked sixth in the country. Brian Boone already has to fight off a single leg takedown. Well, he's in on it. It's a matter now of being patient with it. You know, the, the objective right now for the, for the man with the leg is to find the foot, get further away, or find the hip and get in real close. So now that he has the foot, it's a matter now of patience, keeping him on the mat. 
and affecting one of several different kinds of offenses that he can use. See him taking him back to the middle. Now it's a matter of just being patient. Now he's going to try to catch the head and sweep him one way or the other. Oh, and he lost it. A lot of work to score nothing right there, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He, Here comes, boom. he feels the same way, believe me. Now that I'll tell you, Bob Sitton's going to stop this right now. now. You're not going to be out here slapping around. It's a touch and go and then hit. You got that, both of you? You got it? Okay. Bob's been around long enough to know when things are getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah, he could sense that one right away. Van Arsdale against Boom. Open up, gentlemen. No score. Well, I think it was not out of uh, hostility as much as it was out of enthusiasm. You know, uh, they both wanted to get back at it. I don't see that they're real mad yet. No. Boone started his college career at the University of Kentucky, and they were another of the programs well, that folded. Up, both of you. Get something going. So he moved on to Oklahoma State. There's been too many college programs drop wrestling in the last uh, 10 years, Doug. Somewhere around 70 programs have been dropped, and it's just hard on the sport. I'm warning both of these people, both of them. Get something going. Warnings against both men. Next time it's a penalty. Neither man wants to change his approach. He wants to do what he came to do and hope that the other man gives up quicker. There's a nice high crotch move by Van Arsdale, but he still has to finish it. He was there early. Now, uh, you know, the, the key now is to keep the, the knee in close to the chest. There he's got the leg. Now he's got to find the other foot, or he's got to get back up with it. Still no takedown. He doesn't want to find the waist like that because that's, that's too much power in there. That's where the hips are. He gave up on it. And see, uh, again, all the coaches around the country look at Let's every dual meet is just a training program to get to the national tournament. There's the Van Tyne that is hurt. He and probably, there was a possibility he could have gone at 67, but with the team behind 18 to three, and he not up to par because of an injury, Josie didn't want to take the chance. He might be able to learn something by watching. Van Arsdale's had two nice low moves into the leg and just hasn't been able to finish them. That's what he, he needs that going into the tournament. If you, if you get there, you might only get there once on a real great athlete, so you gotta be able to score with it. He wanted to step through. Oh boy. He's dangerous when he goes. He wanted to headlock him. You have your choice, young man. Hi. You're going to defer, so it'll come over to Hi, you. Hi, ladies. Iowa State will go down. Tenth anniversary season of college wrestling. Okay. You're looking at Jim Gibbons now. He's the one who's wearing the flower. Van Arsdale. He said he tends to get Top man, you move on. prepared for tournaments, and there's an example. He, Finished sixth in the Nationals last year. Well, he's done that in the, even when he was in high school. He's big tournament wrestler. Get ready for that state tournament. Can really, really get going. A national junior tournament. Do well when the time was right. And uh, he's gearing up for this one again. He's got a lot of length. A lot stronger than he looks. He's very dangerous on the bottom. He's got such good, good hip action. He'll get up and start to throw those switches. And if you're trying to hang on, he's going to reverse you. Well, Boone wanted to start on top, which was that's an unusual decision, I think. This He's trying to try to take something out of him. This, now, this is where Van Arsdale's good, right here. You try to put him down, and he'll move his hips just like that in that switch action. And he's out. One to nothing. First point of the match. Well, it looks easy. The thing is, if Boone would have tried to hang on to him, Van Arsdale would have reversed him and maybe put him on his back because he's got that great leverage and great hips on that switch. Well, we've had two close matches in a row without a tremendous amount of activity. That's a nice way to say it. They just, they're wrestling like they're, they're calculating. You know, it's, uh, the, the matches are, are strategy matches rather than just get after it kind of matches. And that's what uh, I'm sure the coaches would like and fans would like. Hear the referee say, get something going. We would sure like it. Boone tried an underarm spin, then went through with a double leg, but uh, he he really didn't have, didn't really get any part of Van Arsdale. But he has 
made the last few offensive moves. We have what left here? Less than a minute in the second period. One to nothing, Van Arsdale. Well, both athletes have enough offense in their arsenal. It's a matter of uh, being able to put the man in position to use it. It's hard to go from right here. Standing face to face, both arms on a man. It's hard to be able to affect an offense from there. Again, Boone made the move. Van Arsdale is going to have to change the tempo here. They've both been warned. And he's, you don't want to get caught stalling. Bob Siddons tends to call stalling maybe less often than a lot of referees. But when he does, it's usually justified. Oh, yeah. So they can't get through each other's arms. You know, they're tied up in the upper body, high level attack, and then they want to make a low level offense, but their arms are all twisted up, up upstairs. One to nothing. There's John Heropolis. He'll be going against Erickson at heavyweight. You ever thought what it would be like to wait around for nine other guys in a halftime? Okay, all right. Whatever happened to the idea that uh, the rules committee, you may have been on the rules committee at the time, huh? It said, let's scratch, let's shake them around, start the heavyweights first once in a while. Well, we decided uh, if the coaches would agree, you could scramble the weights. Just pull them out of a hat and wrestle them in any order. Did you ever see a hair of it happening? Oh, we did it a couple of times in Northern Iowa when I was coaching there when we were down in the Southeast Conference. We did it with Florida a couple, of, but. Uh, not very often. Most teams wouldn't do it. Too conventional. You know, I always thought you could seed them somehow. Let's, which ones do we think are the best matches? And then you just seed them from bottom to top. Well, he has the leg and he has the arm through. So with the leg in like he has it, you know, the man on the bottom can't get his knee down, so he won't be able to get back to his base. So it's a matter now if he can torque him or get the cradle on him. And Arsdale's throwing away all the tape he has on his hands. Actually, Oklahoma State, as you say, it looks like they're they're wrestling to stay close and then win it late. But it's hard to win late on the road, I should think. Oh yeah, you get uh, get yourself all tied up. It's almost like a group of athletes that are shell shocked, Doug. They, you know, they have the talent. Uh, they're just a little bit in doubt of themselves right now. Top man, you move on. Van Arsdale against Brian Boone of Oklahoma State. The Cyclones lead 18 to three. They caught him a little bit high. Boone's just trying to shake him off the top. A dangerous spot right in there when you somersault with a legger. Get somersault right to your back. See, no legger wants to have his hips on the mat. He doesn't want to be down with his hips below yours. He wants to be up on top with his belly button sort toward the mat. So Van Arsdale's not comfortable right here. He wants to get out of there and get up. Now he's where he wants to be, up on top. But he's lost the leg. He could lose a reversal right here. Now especially, now especially. Well, if he can cave him in, if Boone can cave in that outside leg. We have 30 seconds to go in the match. It is still one to nothing. Fighting time now belongs to Van Arsdale. Here we go. So if Boone escapes, Van Arsdale still wins. He gets the riding time point. Bottom man, you get set. Top man, you move on. So Boone will have to go quick and hard. It's not really exploding on the whistle. You just don't see much of that anymore. Too many people just kind of cut somebody loose so they haven't learned to be effective on the bottom. And Von Arsdale is continuing to ride all the way out. And he will win here at this point because even if Boone gets out, Van Arsdale will have the riding time point. There it is. With riding time, two to nothing, Van Arsdale over Boone. It's a win, but not the one that, not really the one they wanted, you know, not the way they wanted it. Well, Boone did a good job stepping in for Van Tyne because uh, Van Arsdale never really took him down. He got an escape and then the riding time point in the last period. Well, 21 to 3 now is the score. The Cyclones over the Cowboys. And we go to 177. There's Bob Gassman. He might, he might wrestle the open up match you're talking about. Well, he's wrestling a man named Wilson that will like to open it up because he can throw. Reggie Wilson of Oklahoma State, senior from Chicago Heights, Illinois, 
and Bob Gassman, a junior from Downers Grove, Illinois, both uh, Chicago suburban wrestlers. Reggie Wilson was at Triton Junior College and twice was voted the outstanding wrestler in the National Junior College Tournament. I don't know if that happens very often. Never had happened before. Well, he has the talent, and the, the contrast you'll open see up, between Gallo, the two athletes up. is going. Wilson more or less on an upper body and Gassman on a low-level attack. So you can anticipate that, that clash. And Wilson would like to get Gassman into sort of a tie-up position where he can try to, to pitch him, headlock him, toss him. Gassman would like to have that low-level attack. Wilson on the left. He's the ranger of the two. Gassman's ranked third in the country. I think Gassman has made a, a lot of improvement. Just holding on like that until it comes a stalemate. Let's open up, both of you. Don't just hold in, both That's of you. That's Van Arsdale. But you can hear the official there saying, you're just holding in. What I was going to say is, I, as I've watched Gassman, he's really developed a better attack at, and not wasting so much energy. He's done a better job of controlling matches, controlling situations. Slick high crotch move, but he couldn't finish it. Wilson managed to shake him off. We've seen a lot of that tonight. Not, unable to finish what you really want to do. Now there's where Wilson wants to be, is in here. Wants to get underneath, get those hips. He's rangy, he's tough in that spot, and Gassman decided he better bail out. Off he's, the mat, both up. They're out of bounds. No score, we have about half the first period gone. There you are, is this yours, young man? This yours? I think Bob Siddons just found the tape that Van Arsdale left out there in the last That's match. All right, young man. Bob Siddons coached for many years at West Waterloo High School. Yes, I walked in his okay, basement go, one guys. time and saw 21 plaques on the wall for 25 years coaching. I was awestruck. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't realize anybody as many as you had, right? <laughs> no, no. I, it's just a lot of people would like to have one. Uh, you know, he. He just has a, a basement full of them. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, CP is a little modest here. Uh, I don't think Bob Siddons ever won two team uh, national titles. Oh, well, yeah, he won 11 state. He's in his element. Let's get something going. There's a warning get something against going. both men. A little slow here through the middle of these weights. Now Gasman goes to the outside for a single. Now See if he can finish. He's been here before. Lost just, it again. And lost it again. So it is. It, Really a critical area. I'm sure the coaches from Iowa State are going to be spending some time with some of these athletes, finishing what they start. You know, the reality of that, Doug, is is so apparent when you get into national tournaments. And you've heard me say that before. If you, if you can get there once on a real great athlete, you better make sure you finish it because you don't get there very often. And once might be all he's ever going to get out of position on because he's so sound. Reggie Wilson. Actually, he's one of two 77-pounders for the Cowboys. Right, their other man, Carney, is ranked uh, seventh in the nation and uh, just uh, has been injured, so he's on the trip. And I, I believe that he has an infection, so they're not wrestling him. Well, he got all the way in that time. See if he can finish. He's been there twice before without any success, and he lost it again. This time, Wilson almost came in with a body lock. It was a nice time to come. Gassman had it. Wilson fought him off, came right back on the offense. Now Gassman fought him off. End of the first period. How is Wilson uh, shrugging him out of there? Well, what they do is they drop their hips. They, they just sag their hips, and then they come right back at their opponent using their hips back in. That's Steve Metzger. We'll come over to you, young man. Who's going to be up next at 190 pounds. He's filling in for... Oklahoma State Oakland. down, Iowa State on top. Here we go, second Iowa period. State. Let's move right into it. Right into right it. Right Bottom man gets right, that. Gaston had his choice. Back. Bottom man set. Top man, you move on. Let's go. No score. Each man has been warned. Wilson's out in the flash. Yes, that was, that was quick and earned. So let's get in there and go. Right in the middle. When I asked that question about how does he do that, um, it's almost like you could get in, if you could take the kinesiology of this and break it down for fans and let them watch, um, it would really be wonderful. But the critical factor for the athlete is that he, that he be able to control his hips and then his opponent's hips. In order to be able to do that, he's got to get down below and then in and to his opponent. So Gasman got in, but didn't have the hips under control and really backed out before he had a chance because the hips were down. 
Wilson leads one to nothing, but he has not been able to make any successful offensive moves. Again, this is it's a rare situation. I'm not used to seeing Oklahoma State teams that uh, are having so much trouble taking people down. No, plus they're they're waiting around. I mean, they're not make they're not generating the offense. They're not trying to get their opponent in motion nor out of position so that they can affect an offense. On the other hand, neither team has had many takedowns. I'm going to count them up here because it seems to me so few. Blaze. Points. A point each way now. Now, again, Gassman's in on the leg. No, he has, to, he has to be able to affect some kind of motion there. And Stay with him. It's not a good sign. Yes, Oklahoma State has had three takedowns in the entire yeah, league. Bayes had one. Bailey had one against Jeff Gibbons. And Silva had one against Krieger, and that's it. For Iowa State, Summit had a pair. Kelly had, a, had three of them. Tate had one. Joe Gibbons had a couple of them, and that's all. It has not been a very exciting meet from that standpoint. I think Iowa State is showing oh, there's a nice good lift there. Got into the leg and lifted it. Wilson gets one for Oklahoma State at 177 and takes the lead 3-1 to one over Gassman right at the end of the second period. 4-1, to 4-1. to one. Oh, Watch him, he just lifts. Blocks the leg, Both controls the, the hips, so pulls him back. That penalty made it. Man gets set. That penalty, as we come back to live action again, went against both men. So Wilson led two to one after the penalty, and now it's four to one after the first takedown in. Well, let's see. Since 158 pounds. Each one got a point for stalling. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, both of them got a point for stalling. Okay. All right, Gasman starts set. down, and he has some work to do. Top man, you move on. Move into it. Right away, let's go. Just quick up. There was an explosion, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And an earned escape. Man, just keep that tempo right there, be in great shape. Got the leg. He, uh, uh, Wilson has been able to stretch him out every time. Well, it, that isn't just hips either. That's some of that is Gasman. You know, he's got the leg. He doesn't want it bad enough to keep it and fight through it because it's brutal in there. You know, you get beat around a lot, and uh, you have, the only way you learn to do it is get in practice and just find it out. But when you're in there four or five times as he's been and come out with nothing, you begin to wonder now, what am I going to do? Well, uh, what he's going to do is go back to practice probably and get Ed Bannick as assistant coach and have that leg about uh, 400 times between now and the Nationals and find out how to finish it because there are ways, but you have to really want it. Four to two is the score. Wilson over Gassman. Oklahoma State hasn't won a match since 134 pounds. Headbutt there. I think uh, Gassman got headbutt and lip. Bob Gassman of Downers Grove, Illinois. He was a high school champion. And last year finished second in the Big 8 at 167. The next match will be at 190. Mike Farrell of Oklahoma State, a freshman from Minnesota, against Steve Metzger. And next time out, next Tuesday night, you see the Badgers against the Engineers from Lehigh, courtesy of WLVT. Okay, here we go, guys. CP we and I will take a night off. We got one minute left. You can watch Russ Hellickson's Badger team right against Lehigh in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Here it's four to two, Wilson over Gaston. Cowboys trying to win one. Now the hands on the head really kind of keep the man off. He's in there deep on that leg, just got extended. That time he tried to turn it into a double as quickly as possible, which is the first time he's done that. But he was on the edge of the mat. It was too close to the edge. Wilson gets the move. he got to finish it. See how in there deep, that's dangerous, stepping outside. Gasman almost threw him off of it. Now that's better, the inside trip. Less than a half a minute to go. Wouldn't it be nice if we saw this kind of wrestle in the whole match? What inspired these guys anyway? Time? <laughs> and Wilson came through with a tough takedown at 6-2. Let's go back in the middle. 
I saw him. I saw him. Let's go. Watch him come in Let's on the go. leg. Here he's in on the leg. And he hasn't, see, it, it, it just steps over. Now, when he steps over top, he's gonna start to scrape that toward him. He's gonna pull that on in. And that's that's what the coach was saying. You gotta be on the right side. See that? Takes the knee outside. That's what drives the guy down. It's dangerous and illegal. Only a few seconds left, and Wilson seems to be in command here. But Iowa State needed to be well ahead, I think, coming into these last matches because it's going to be a tough match from here on out. Uh, we have Mike Farrell coming up next. There's the end of that one, 177. Gassman loses to Reggie Wilson. No riding time to add an extra point, but it is 6-2 to two in favor of the Cowboy. And so after 177 pounds, it's Iowa State 21, Cowboy 6. We've had no major decisions, no superior decisions. We did have one fall. That was at 126 pounds when Kelly caught Eddie Woodburn and pinned him and gave the Cyclones a nine to nothing lead. Here we are, 190. This is Steve Metzger filling in for Eric Volker, wrestling for Iowa State against Mike Farrell, a freshman who last year, I don't think he's a red shirt either. Last year he was the- uh, Move around, move around. Stay is he a red shirt? No. He was a state champion last year in Minnesota high school. Well, he might be a little bigger. He uh, has a little more muscle, and I think he's more a legitimate 190 pounder than Metzger, who's- Can make 77. Can make 77. <coughs> and in fact, wrestles behind Gassman. Off the mat, let's go back, both back. Well, he's been around in a, in a program with uh, quality athletes for quite a while, and I, th I think that even though he's a, a stand-in, I think that Steve Mesker up, can gentlemen. hold up. his own with most going. most athletes that don't have a lot of experience as as his opponent does tonight. Let's go back. You need it. Neither one of you heavyweights to coming up next. Right Haropoulos right and Erickson. Erickson right ranked first in the country. Haropoulos has lost only this year to Erickson. That's all he, the only losses he has are to this big cowboy heavyweight. And they're extremely athletic as heavyweights go. Here we are at 190. Mike Farrell in the orange on the left. The Cowboys against Steve Metzger of the Cyclones. Well, if he's gonna be effective for Coach C, Farrell's gonna to have to develop some of that, that uh, head control. Instead of getting on the head like he is right now and hanging onto it, Coach C's style is to maneuver the head. Uh, snap it, cuff it, pop it. There's a man Metzger's taking his place of, Eric Bolker. Just took the cast off of an ankle where he has a stress fracture. Move in. They're figuring he'll be back before too long. Farrell got it on a double leg, but Metzger is still with it. Oh, yeah, nice, nice control of that. Now he's, he's winding himself around. He's got the got both of the uh, legs trapped. So it's a matter now of whether Metzger hangs on to it or not. He, he did. didn't. Metzger had to give it up. So Farrell leads 2-0. He's not going to try to hang on to it. 2-1. to one. Metzger scores the escape. If you, if you, as you watch the match, you can see Farrell from Oklahoma State has uh, reached out and tied up to the head with his right hand almost each time they've been in the, the, the tie-up position. Oh, he's just got him trapped underneath and will try to eat up some time, energy. But that's an area where Mesker might be able to get after him. You can see him, he'll reach out and tie up with his right hand, hold the head in tight. 40 seconds to go in the first period. It's, Cyclones 21, Oklahoma Move State 6, middle, with two matches, this Both one and one more to go. Farrell has the leg. Well, he really didn't penetrate hard for that. He just kind of dropped down and took it away from him. Four to one. And he has it crossed, he has it scissored. That's the old uh, Oklahoma Navy ride, Navy ride, lace ride. That's been very effective for a lot of people in the past. Just didn't exercise it. Both of you, both of you. Neither one of you are doing anything. 
Either one of you. Russell on top. End of the period with Farrell of Oklahoma State leading Metzger four to one. You see Les Anderson there in the middle. So they're not real pleased right now. Les Anderson, a two-time national champion, the only year he lost was he lost to Stan Abel. Yes, everybody thought that was a real heated rivalry for years after. It just it was early. See, all he really did right there was just drop down into the leg. Now he's got, they call that the lace right of the Navy right. What he needs to do is be able to lift it and go toward the man's head. Metzger wisely moved out away from it. Farrell had the choice. Metzger is out. He's been able to escape twice, but Farrell has both takedowns. They count more. <laughs> Bob Sittens takes them back to the center again. I would think he'd be quite comfortable under the new up, suggestions, I guess, rather than rules, that the referee can and talk to the wrestlers out. more. Yes, Bob. Bob likes to be able to exercise that right. It was hard on him when he couldn't say anything by the rules, and uh, this suits his personality and philosophy more. Let's go back to the middle, fellas. You guys aren't going to get anything out there. You're not going to get anything out there. You're going to get it right here in the middle. <laughs> and you hear, him, you hear him telling the athletes, this is what the, what the rules permit him to tell them. That's, uh, that's really the way it is. Yeah. Wrestle in the middle. Four to two, Farrell of Oklahoma State on the right against Metzger in Hilton Coliseum on our 10th anniversary college wrestling series. Back, both of you. Uh, coach from Oklahoma State has said to his athletes several times now, we can overhear him saying, you know, stay on him. You know, don't let up on him. Concentrate. He got ahead, now he's, it's like he's, he's trying to sit on it now. He needs to go back to his offense, and of course, Metzger need, definitely needs to generate one. When you stop that guy right there, you want to make sure you take him down off it. Less than a minute to go. Second period. Four to two, Farrell in the orange. Metzger had the leg, but uh, out of bounds. Back to the center. There's Erickson, the heavyweight, coming up for Oklahoma State. Practicing with his mean looks there. Now Metzger would like to come around. Right it one way, went the other way. Neither way works. They have to move that man, not just yourself. You really have to be able to move that man to be able to create an angle. You know, he got part of the angle started one way and just didn't finish it, coming back hard enough. Some of those, you know, if you don't do it often enough, you don't have enough success at it. You're not sure that it will work, so you don't do it with enthusiasm. We're near the end of the second period. Steve Metzger, he's one of three Ames High School hometown wrestlers here in the lineup for Iowa State tonight, along with the Gibbons brothers. Coach wants him to snap him right there. Coach Bank wants him to snap him down. And you'd see him trying it. You know, he gets him man leaning on him. Second period ends, still four to two. Farrell leads over Metzger. Here's the score right over here. Time advantage, 35 seconds for Farrell. Farrell has his. down, Oklahoma State down, Iowa State on top. Farrell chooses minutes, to go down. Guys, Farrell gave go. up his choice in the Get second period. Going. He gave it to Metzger, who went. Bottom man, you work to up. come out. Top man, improve your position. Get set, bottom man. Top man, move on. When we talked to Coach Gibbons before the meet, Doug, I, I see some of what he was said to us, and, and it probably isn't obvious to the other people, but they've been working very hard this week, two, two a days. In fact, they had two a days yesterday. So the day before the big Oklahoma State meet, they're not even talking about Oklahoma State, they're just talking about getting in shape for the Nationals. And they have wrestled a little tired. Not like, not like they're in bad shape, just like they're tired. You know, like I need a break, and, and this is only a, a one match day, so it gives them a little bit of chance to kind of recover. Metzger tried to tip Farrell for near fall points. Came very close, but couldn't quite get the angle. He still, he still has the arm trap, but, Metz, but uh, Farrell has his hip throw drop the other way. Now he has him loaded up again. Well, let's see, what is he gonna be able to do? He lost the arm now, so he's not gonna be able to be effective with it. 
about a minute to go is a warning against Farrell. Well, now he's cleared his hips out of there, but he has his arm tied up yet. Not always that easy when the man wants to hang on to you, is it? Well, Farrell has a two-point lead. And I think they're, they want to keep Metzger in this position on top and hope for back points. All right, he has 45 seconds to try to affect one of those uh, near falls. And the coach over there, C, is saying, get up out of there. Don't stay down there. The Cowboy Farrell really hasn't been dangerous in any position since the first period. Tried to get himself freed up right there, but Mesker does have an arm. Now, if he can come back in position here and maybe dump him over, just has to transfer sides. Uh, Farrell. Farrell reaches pretty good base. Not really guilty of stalling. He's making his attempts to get up. It's that Mesker's just been tough on him and knocking him down. Only 20 seconds to go. Almost helping him out here. There's the escape. Right at the end. Farrell holds on and wins five to two. No riding time. Actually, the riding time point went to Metzger. Take hands. Take hands. So the Cowboys win their first one since the last match. They've now won two in a row. 21 to nine. Five to three, Farrell over Metzger. We come up to heavyweight where we have the top ranked man, Tom Erickson of the Cowboys against John Heropolis, that man right there, who's lost three times this year, every time to Erickson. You big guys, you big guys, let's do your wrestling right here in the middle. Sit hands. Touch and go. And here we go. Touch and go. They don't wrestle like heavyweights. No, they'll be down on a low-level attack. You see, there's Heropolis in already. He is lighter. He weighs 217, something like that. And I think uh, Erickson is over 250. You know, Erickson was a 185-pounder in high school. And so uh, he's really put on some, some size. But they both like that low level. Front headlock position for, or at least a... To really make that front headlock effective, a man has to get his head off to the side. And uh, when you see a man's head up in the top of the back, he's kind of holding it for position and, and trying to stalemate it rather than trying to uh, work a, an offensive position. You don't see too many heavyweights taking double leg shots from that far out. No, you don't. And that was a little too far out. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, from the, from the other county. Oh, that was Good a move by Erickson. Just caught him down underneath him. Erickson takes the lead two to nothing. Well, he's, he really is he's in control, but he doesn't have all of his weight on Heropolis, and so it's given Heropolis a chance to get his hips free and out to the outside. Well, yeah, I think you can see why it was important for Iowa State to do well at the lower weights because the Cowboys expected to win up here. Well, you can imagine if they'd have had Van Tyne in there against Van Arsdale, it might have been a, sure. a win, uh, a chance to maybe win the match. Well, let me get something going. Well, Erickson on top really has not done anything except just blanket his opponent. So it's the kind of spot where uh, you can anticipate the official Bob Siddons to get on him after a while for not, not trying to be effective with pinning combinations. That's a tough right for a heavyweight, that inside ankle. Very, very little opportunity to get away from that. Gets it out of bounds anyway. 38 seconds to go in the first period. Well, whether it's a heavyweight or a 118 pounder, it's still that bottom spot is, is a, diff a difficult place for an athlete. Eddie Bannock spent a lot of time with Heropolis this year. And it showed 22 3 for Heropolis. 
This is, has been his toughest competition this year. Erickson who now leads two to nothing. Well, he put the leg in. You don't see a lot of heavyweights legging either. Knight pulls it out of there. And finally building up. Burn a lot of energy right here, Doug. Yeah. Erickson's been very tough on top. Heropolis not. I sense he's not quite sure what he wants to do on the bottom there. You have your choice, young man. Uh, You're going to go. Oh, here he is, and he just Neutral. catches him down Neutral. under him. Okay. Now he snaps him, pops himself free as the arm trap, and then spins around, drops his hip comes on around him in behind him for the two point. And that down. was the only takedown. Now in the second period, Heropolis was on top. He started on his feet. He has that choice if he wants it. He wants to be careful going in underneath this big guy. He's got to be able to have an arm and swing to the side. Be right in there, guys. Be right in there. There he is. Now he's to the side. That's that side attack. He needs to finish it. Keep the angle. Can't afford to attack him straight on. Now he's got the angle. He's then getting in a little bit of trouble right here. He's starting to not only lose the angle, he's starting to lose the position. Stalemate. We saw him looking off the side there. Coach Vanek is saying you got to make the, you got to turn the whole circle. Going on the leg, go ahead and turn the whole circle. Get all the way behind him. Two zip. The score, Erickson over Heropolis. We're in the second period. Iowa State has put the meat away, 21 to 9. So the best that Oklahoma State could do is be get within six points. Really, Heropolis has made a lot of offense in this match. Hasn't penetrated deep enough on, on most of them, but Erickson hasn't done much of anything. Uh, now he's got, he has a leg, just needs an angle. Lost it. Tom Erickson of Oklahoma State ranked first in the nation. He got his takedown on the counter. He's been countering the whole match. Yes, he has. There's Heropolis, just a little, a little uh, fake drag out of there. He slipped it out. 20 seconds to go in the second period. And the Iowa State coaches want stalling. They want stalling on Erickson. And well, again, Heropolis, me, Heropolis has done all the work. Good flexibility there. Here comes Erickson, right at the end. Coach is really frustrated right here. Now twice he's been able to counter. And let's listen to this. Let's listen. Well, he, he did all he did all the shooting. He shot, and you and the other kid countered. Actually, he countered. He was working on something too. He's not even going well, for anything out there. Okay, here we go. Okay, I, Heropolis has it, but he lets the leg slide away from him. Right here, you see him you let the thigh choice. slide out away. Go Once the thigh goes yeah, away, okay. affects the one takedown is it with one second one to go. He did it on counters in each period. Four to nothing in favor of one Erickson. He wants to start Tom down. Assuming he can make a, an escape of some sort, I'm sure that Heropolis is going to let him go. He does. Five nothing. They went past him now. He's got the angle on him again. And he lost it again. He's going to lose the takedown, too. And again, it comes around. Well, That's, he's halfway there every time. Yes, and uh, it really it says a, a, a lot more for Once Erickson's body control and balance than it does for uh, Heropolis' inability to finish, because Heropolis is making good offensive shots and really doing a, a great job. Right, hit in it's there. just the other man is, is a heck of an athlete countering him out of it. Erickson lets him go at seven to one. Heropolis gets his first point, goes right back on the leg for maybe the sixth time. So it's just get it up high, don't be in a hurry. Take your time and watch your mat position. Keep the thigh close to the chest. Now he's gonna find the foot.
They want him to let him up with uh, 45 seconds to go. Coach Gibbons is right out of the mat. He's got to be careful of uh, walking out of the mat. <laughs> you learn young. Sometimes you're in, not in the friendly confines of uh, Hilton Coliseum, and that referee just raises his finger up and gives the other team a team point. Let's look at that one again. This is the one successful single leg takedown attempt. Watch him. He just hits in there, follows the leg, gets the two points. And then when uh, Haropoulos starts to let him up, uh, Erickson claims injury and uh, takes a little bit of time. Well, Aropoulos just keeps right on coming. He sure does. That's how he got to be 22 and 3 this year against the biggest guys. And Erickson goes for a double leg. That's well, I, he did it. That's the first takedown he's generated. He, he does have that. As I started the show, I said uh, he's very good with that. Just you haven't seen him do it because Aropoulos has been going so often. Sometimes if you, uh, if you'd like to anticipate that it's, it's all the other guy, but Karapolis has made a lot of offense in this, in this uh, man. He's doing it right now, too. Enter. Reversal for Karapolis. And he lets him up again. He's a goer, isn't he? Yeah, he is. You have to be happy with him because he... He gives it all he has. 11 to 5. In favor of Erickson, 11 to 6. 12 to 6, is that the score? 12 to 6. In favor of the number one ranked man in the nation at heavyweight, Tom Erickson. Well, I'll tell you, John Aropoulos really went after it in that match. Worked hard. Even though Generated he lost. a lot of offense, yes. Well, it turned out that the Cowboys won the last three. And if it had been closer, a little farther down, we might have been uh, really biting nails at the end. As it turned out, Iowa State won six of the matches, and the big one was at 126. They got decisions from Perry Summit at 18, Joe Gibbons, Tim Krieger, and Bill Tate. Those were last second decisions. The last two with Krieger and Tate. Van Arsdale, two to nothing at 167. Oak and a pin from Bill Kelly at 126. He pinned Eddie Woodburn with 29 seconds to go. Oklahoma State got decisions from Leo Bailey over Jeff Gibbons, and then in the last three matches, Reggie Wilson, Mike Farrell, and Tom Erickson. So the final score was 21 to 12, Chuck. And a little slow through the middle. Yeah, it was a little slow, but uh, when we started, you said, how's it gonna be? And I said, oh, 10 or 11. Uh, I didn't anticipate you know, some of the matches coming that way, but uh, Iowa State's made some progress, and I do believe that they wrestled a little tired, but they're on the move. Got a better attitude, a lot of crowd enthusiasm. Team starting to pull together. Uh, this is a team, a young team on the move, I believe. Well, once again, that final score is Iowa State 21, the Oklahoma State Cowboys 12. That evens out the Cowboys' mark at five and five this year. Iowa State is now 14 and one.